Welcome to Mode Concept. This is the practical aspect of uh, introduction to embedded systems. We are going to be starting with Lab 1. So, as we have done the overview, we now know what an embedded system is. So, let's start quickly with our Lab 1. This is Lab 1. So, in our Lab 1, we have a uh, identifying the I.O. port of a microcontroller unit. So we want to identify the input and output ports available on the microcontroller unit. And the microcontroller unit we are using is not that one but the PIC16F628A. So we want to know the ports that are available on it that can serve for, for input and for output. So now the requirements for our practical we need a PC as we have already installed Pro 2 simulation software. We need micro basic programming software as the compiler. We need a power supply source. We need a breadboard. We need the PIC itself. We need crystal oscillator. All these things we need them to do the simulation and equally perform the breadboard uh, the breadboard uh, uh, in construction. So then, when we look at the brief theory we have here from the diagram below, this is the diagram. This is the real picture of a PIC16F628A. This is how it is in real life. Then this is how it is on Proto's platform. When you see it on real life, you will see that it has 18 pins, nine pins on this side, nine pins on the other side. These nine pins, these 18 pins are shared into two ports. You have the port A, you have the port B. You see, from 8.0, 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.4, 5, 6, and 7, that is 8 bit. It's 8 bit, 8 bit. So, this is the port A. Almost from this power, this is the power section, this is ground, this is input voltage. So, from here up is the port A. From here down is port B. You can see port B.0, B.1, 3. 4, 6, and 7. So that's the two ports A and B. So you address these ports in our programs to have this uh, this man, this computer, do whatever we want it to do. So on process platform, the pins are scattered, but it doesn't matter. As far as you know the pins that the ports you are using, when you come to real life, you will do whatever you want to do, whatever you have done on process to that port, you do it again in real life on breadboard when you are doing the construction. So on this on the process platform, the power pins are hidden. These two pins here. This should be pin. This is a pin one, pin two, pin three, pin four, pin five, and pin fourteen. They are not here. If you search very well, they, they are not here. They are hidden because this particular PIC on controller is already connected when you produce. You don't need to do any other connection. So there are actually some other reserved pins here, like this pin four. We we'll call it master clear. It is always pulled up using a 10k resistor when we are doing our construction but on Pro Tools we can leave it because it's assumed that an internal master is in charge so then we probably have other ports here as we have, as we have it on this place we have a port 8.0 8.1 down to port 8.7 see then we have b.0 down to b.7 so we have uh, 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 pin 16 and pin 15 that is 8.6 and 7 for clock in clock out or oscillator 1 oscillator 2 this will connect our, our oscillator when we are doing the construction on the breadboard but some produce will do, will do without it because it's assumed the system assumes that an internal oscillator has been connected so let us go down to the procedure to identify these input and output ports available on this like microcontroller. This is the procedure. First of all, we'll pick the, mic the microcontroller from Proteus Electronic Component Library. Then, to do this, we we'll double click on Proteus icon on the desktop. From the Proteus icon homepage, we we'll go straight to Schematic Capture. Click to open a new Schematic Capture window. I would like, as I'm showing you this, we are doing it so that we will not just waste much of our time. So. Without much delay now, I'm going to go to 
my my desktop to start this procedure. So you just go with me. I'll close my desktop. Is I have it on the tax bar here. I'll click on it. And step one said. So let me keep this side by side. Let me keep this side by side. So as we are doing, we are seeing, we are seeing what we are doing. So Plutus has opened. So um, from the step one set, pick the microcontroller unit from the process attorney component library. So we are going to pick our microcontroller unit now. So to pick it, you double click on the process icon, which I have done on the desktop to start the motion software. Now, having done that from the Protus home page, this is the home page, I'll go to schematic capture. To so open a new a new schematic capture window. So this is schematic capture on this icon, this uh, menu bar here. I'll go to schematic capture, look at it here. This schematic capture. This is schematic capture. You can see. So I'll click on it. It's open. You can see where it's seeing here loading. So it has opened already. So now the next thing is to from the from when the schematic capture window opens, click on P. Look at the P here. On P now, as I've said, this P. So this is the this is the P devices dialog box has opened. Yeah, so on the P devices dialog box, type PIC one six F six six three eight eight. So I'll just cut it from here and paste it there. Inside the search button on that keyword, this is a search button here. Search button on that keyword. So I'm going to type it here. So I have typed, I have typed it. So it, it goes straight to locate the PIC for me in the library. Look at it here. Look at how the PCB design is. The PCB design is how it is. Then look at the picture on Proteus. So when I have done this, I'll just say double, double click on this PIC to, to fetch it. When I double click on it, it comes directly on that devices. So let go. So bad. So, so yes. when you when my controller appears, hit enter. Okay, you see from the or click OK to select the device. It will appear under devices. So now it has appeared under devices. You can see it here under devices. So, so now the rest of the things I'll be doing now, I will not just follow be following the the procedure. I will not be doing it so that you'll be seeing it. So no need to read or follow this procedure as we have it here. Even though what I'm doing. What I'll be doing is just the same thing we will have on these procedures, but I think it will save us time to just go straight to them. And as I'm doing them, you are seeing it. So let's go to produce now. So we are on the pick devices dialog box. We have picked our device. So I'm going to close this window. Now go to produce. So I have picked my device now. This is my device is here. That is under devices is my map so the, my cursor is showing pen this pen is showing shows that i'm carrying something so if i want to see what i'm carrying i'll just click once on the screen see it has shown me what i'm carrying i'm carrying the last thing i picked which is that microcontroller unit so i will click again on any way i want to drop it on the screen if i want to drop it here i'll click here if i want to drop it here, i'll click here so now i want to drop it here i'll just click again now the Image is too small for me. It is, look at the design map is too small. I'm going to increase zoom it. So I'll just go to zoom here. I'll zoom in. I want it to be bigger again. Zoom in. So it has shifted from my view. So I'll just go to map. Take it where I will see. Move it where I will see it. Move the box. Can see from the map. I'm moving the box. I'll just click. While I'm moving it, if I don't click, I cannot. It will not be where I want it to be. So I need to click on that map to have it dropped where I want, I want to drop it so now this is it this is the microcontroller unit as i showed you on the diagrams this is it in real life in Proteus. so but these are the ports the various ports i don't know the ports that are available for app and the one that is not available so i'm going to go and do my 
for my write my code to be able to address this man. Because before I address it, it's only the code I can use to address it. So we are going to be writing the code on micro basic. One thing I want you to note whenever you want to do any work, any construction, you first of all do your design and now go to your compiler and write your program based on that design you have done. When you write your program first for doing your design, you are bound to make some mistakes, you have some errors when you are doing your construction. But after you must have done your design, you now write the program based on the design you have done. So now I'm going to go over to Micro Basic to write my programs. So I will not close, I will just minimize this man. I'll locate Micro Basic on my, on my system. I have it on my taskbar. That is it, I'll just click on it. So, Say yes. Now I will equally go to my PowerPoint. PowerPoint. I'll go to programs. Programs. So I'm going to keep it side by side now, so that we'll be able to work with work with it. So, so a micro basic window has opened. So it's still showing me the last program I wrote. That notwithstanding. Yeah, no pictures appeared. So let me, let us look at some steps in, in right now our programs. This is program one. In this program one, we just want to identify the the input output port of the microcontroller unit. So that is what we want to do. So we are going to write a program that will do that for us. So first of all, we we'll make a comment. Make comment. Train the reader or subsequent programmers or subsequent viewers or people that will view a program afterwards telling them what this program does so this program a program to on and off PIC my controller I obit using decimal instruction code so here yeah, I say decimal because you equally you equally have binary instruction code but here we are using decimal so now the first thing we we'll do after we have made our, our comment if there is no variable we are going to declare, we will go straight to the main program, that is the main. On that main, we will try to configure our microcontroller, telling the input, telling the ports what they do and what we want them to do. So here now, we want all the ports to be up, all the ports that are up, uh, up it to show themselves. So we are going to uh, make all the ports available for up it. So it will now use its hand to give us the ones that are actually available. So by so doing, we we'll just say this a equal to zero, this b equal to zero. This a equal to zero means that we want all the ports of this a to be an output port. We want this b equal to zero means we want all the ports of this b, uh, all the ports of b to be an output port. So all the ports of a output port, all the ports of b output port. By so doing, as I said, it will now show us the ports that are available here for output. You see it. So we we'll now make port A equal to zero, port A B equal to zero. That's just to initialize the bits of this port. The bits of this port, all the ports A and B, want to initialize their bits. Then we we'll now give an instruction CMCOM equal to seven. All the comparators equal to seven to have them all turned off. When they are all turned off, we we'll now give instruction, they will respond. But for instance, you are giving instruction to turn on. A, a pause that is already on becomes a confusion. But when the pause is off, you say turn it on, it becomes a, a good instruction. The uh, whatever you are addressing will respond smoothly. So after we have done this, this configuration, we we'll now go straight to our own code. The, the code we want to write, the things we want the microcontroller to do. So we we'll just declare a, lab, a label. So whatever we are doing will be under this our own label. This is the main label. But we want this one to be our own label. So that whatever we are doing, we will render it. We will now give instruction port A equal to 255. 255 means turn on all the ports available on port A. That's the beginning of 255. Turn on all the ports available on port A. You see, so that is what this thing means. Then turn on all the ports available on port B. You see, this is when I say delay for 5000 uh, milliseconds. Which is certain five thousand seconds. So uh, that is delay. Keep the ports on. That's meaning keep the, keep these ports, keep the bits of, of these ports on 
for this length of time. After which, you turn it off. That is port B. What what A port zero? Port B port zero. Okay, we together. Put these ports on. Leave them on for this length of time. Turn the ports off. Leave them off for this length of time. After this length of time, go back to start. You see what that means? Oh, me, I could start. Then end. This end must have a full stop. If you don't put the full stop, the process will not run. It will, not, it will, be, it will be giving you errors which you wouldn't know where it's coming from. You see, you wouldn't know where it's coming from. So, but when you have it like that, like this, it will run and run smoothly. So, having understood this program, I'm going to copy it to my compiler and run it so that you will see how it does. I'll copy it. So, one of my compilers, as I said earlier, I'll just go to new project. When this window opens, I'll just go straight to next, standard project, next. Then I need to choose the name of my code. I'll just call it code one. In the name of the project, you don't put space and you don't st start it with a number. If you put space, it will not go. If you start it with a number, it will not go. So there are some not some allowable characters and some that are not allowable, which is the normal thing. So we'll not change, change. we do want to have this program put for us. We'll go to browse. We want to put it on desktop. Always put your pro, pro your codes either desktop or document post. So always inside a new folder. Don't just drop it on the desktop. Put it inside a new folder. And this new folder, I'm going to call it. I'll call it. Uh, I'll call it. Uh, uh, my code. My code. So I will now come here and choose device name, choose the PIC. It's already on PIC 166628 here. Yeah. But if it's not, I'll just go to this drop down and click. Select it. So it's already here. So device clock, that is the oscillator. I'm going to choose my oscillator from here. So here I have 8 megahertz. I'm going to make it 10. I will not go to next. If interact where they are, I'll go to next. I'm done with that. So the environment for me to write my program has opened, having all these things on it. So, but because I copied the program, I'm just going to paste it. I will remove from declaration and paste my own control V. So I have pasted my program. So I don't want to waste much time in typing it. That's why I just copied it. Copied it since I have already written it. If I have not written it. I'll just start afresh and write all these things one by one. So but since I have it, I'm going to have pasted it. So I'm going to run it. So I don't think there's anything here that, is, that I have not explained. So I'll just go to now. Nah, I'll just go to save. I'll say save again from this save as the dollar that appeared. Save. Okay. So I will now go to this is build. Build. So I'm going to build the program here. Build. Program has run. Can see has run. So project linked successfully. You see. So finish successfully. So it has now it has run. Inside that my folder, you will see that it has already generated the hex file for me. Let's go there. Let's go there and see. This is my this is my uh, new folder. Okay. This is my new folder. The one I called my code. I'll open it. You see, a lot of files have been generated here, as I told you earlier. But there is one important file we need here, which is what the what the uh, program, what the design understands. So let's go and look for it. Look at it here. Hex file. Hex file. Other files are important too. But this is what the, the only one, the design, the command controller, the computer selects. This is where its own information is. Every other thing here is just like a, a, nothing to it because it doesn't see them. So you will see what, I'm, what I mean by that. I'll minimize it. So I'll go back to my, now I've written my program. I'll go back to my design. Double click on my Protus, on my microcontroller. I will double click on my, on my microcontroller now. Now, the path reference, I can decide not to show it. I will just say hide. The path value, that is this. I can decide not to show it, but let me show it. Then, 
the next thing I need to do here is just to come down straight to program file. I'll upload my program here. So I will locate wherever that program is. But because I chose desktop, it made things easier for me. I'll just go straight to the desktop. New folder. This is it. See, that's the only file showing here. Other ones are not showing here. Because of what? This is the only file. The microcontroller on the C is in fact. That's the one it sees. So I'll just double click on it. So next thing I will do here is just to change my my change my um oscillator value to 10 megahertz as I have it already in my program. That's all. So the next thing I will say, okay. So inside this man now is my program code. If I go to run from here now, it will just do that thing I have written in my program. See, if I transfer this this pro, this man now transfer the program the program to the hardware device, it will just perform that thing I have already written in that program. Let's run run and see. I'll go to whether I go to the bug run simulation or I come down to this play button here. See, some strange you know, drop what, what is current. I'll, I'll just right click to dismiss it. I, click. I don't want it. I can still decide to drop this pen that is carrying it. Let's go to this place. Selection mode. Click. See, I have dropped it. So I'll just go to run here now. I click on run. Let's see what happens. You see? You see what is happening here? These ports are the ports available for input and output. You see these ones. You see, it's, it's, it's blinking because we, we told it to, in the program we wrote, we said it should blink it because we want, it said it should come up, come on and come, go off and go to start. So it will come on, go off, go go to start, come on again continuously. So you see, that's why it's blinking. These are the various input output ports. So these ones on red, that's going off and on, and the ones are available. So the ones are available as I.O. ports. Then these other ones, are not available they are special ports you can't use them they are special ports if you want to use them you have to go inside this microcontroller when you are doing the setup and set it that this port should be available as you don't want to put any uh, external oscillator you want to use internal one this port becomes available as you don't want to use master clear you want to use internal one they will not release this port but as this port these ones are now they are they are not meant for io ports they are not io ports they are just meant for crystal oscillator master clear Okay. Then this is the only another port, port 3 that is not equally available. Port 3, you can see, you can see, port 3. So, but other ones are available, no, it's not related. Other ones are available. So, these are the ports that are available on this microcontroller unit. So, having done this, you can start to save this design, save this design, this Protus Motion design uh, work. Design and produce can not just go to save here and locate where our program is. So, as we have everything inside that program, just go to desktop, new folder. Now, give it a name once you give it. Call it a good one design. Design now, go to save. So, now we have saved our design. In the same place our code, in the same folder we have our code. So having done this now, I cannot decide to stop simulation because I have done what I want to do. Now the next thing in the lab we need to do is we have to we have to make our observation. This is this is a, the this is how the simulation results is. And that is how it is in our in our design as you can as you saw it so our designs our design has been done so what is our observation observation you can observe that the microcontroller must be configured for it to work the way you want but be configured must be configured in the program for it to work the way you want that is one observation that myself made you can make your own uh, I equally observe that some of the ports are not available for as as an I/O port, and for them to be available, we have to go to the internal configuration of the microcontroller to really release them so that they can become available. You can see them here. These ones they are not available. See, 
You see, you see. So you can. I must say, I only noticed that in the pro, in the in the program you, that we use trees, trees to control the pots. We use trees to control the pots. You can see them here. These trees to control the pots to decide the pots what they can act as whether it, as input or as an output. So that's another thing I observed. So I only observed the. That this particular PS we are using has 18 pins, and the uh, and observe again that it has port A and port B, and they only observe that on Pro Tools platform that the power power buttons, the power pins are not shown because the the design is really connected to power. You see, so so there are a lot of things to observe here, which I want you to make your own observation and then record record them under observations. Make two observations and record them under observations. Yeah, own observation. Then write a pre precaution. What precaution did you take from the beginning of this lab to the end of the lab? Myself, I know I took precautions. I wrote my program well before uh, 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 uploading it inside my design so that it will give me what I want. And I only first of all configured my controller before writing my, my own code, particularly, so that it will only respond to my codes. That's another precaution I took. Then in my design, I picked the right PIC, the right microcontroller, that is the PIC 16F628A, as I, I wanted from the library pool. So to be able to respond to my code, which is being, being, being uh, written for this particular microcontroller. If I pick a different microcontroller, it will not work. Since this is my program I'm going to write, is for this PIC. So another thing I did again as a precaution. I first of all did do my design before I go to Micro Basic to write my program. So so these are the various precautions I made. Then in my own conclusion, I can conclude that some ports on the event controller are available for IO operations, while some are not. And the, every event controller must be first configured before you can use it very well. So thank you very much for watching this video, for watching, following up in this lab. Uh, do well to like this video and subscribe to the channel so that the upcoming labs as they are dropping, we'll be catching them sharp sharp. Thank you. Bye.